All right. I want you to keep your place in Acts chapter 20, because we're going to come right back to it. And I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Keep your place in Acts chapter 20. We're coming right back. I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Second Timothy chapter three. Now, I spent some time thinking about and just trying to prepare what what I wanted to preach this morning. Being basically the last this last day I'm going to be here as pastor and, and preaching and um, just kind of mulling over what I want to leave you kind of leave you with thoughts I want to leave you with and um, what I think is needful upon my own departure. And that Acts chapter 20 came to mind was as Paul's leaving and he's giving a warning. And what I want to preach this morning is just the truth of, of the fact that there, are, there is an enemy. There are enemies of the gospel. There are enemies out there that are going to try to destroy this church. They're going to try to, to take this church down. They're going to try to, to you know, corrupt the doctrine. There's, we're living in perilous times, and the message I want to get this morning is just a warning, a warning to you in perilous times. Because at the end of the day, we all are responsible for our own actions, our own choices, what we believe. What you believe is your choice, obviously. No one could force you in anything. Now, people can be deceptive. People can fool you. People can trick you. People can gain your confidence. And maybe they, they may be a wolf. But at the end of the day, it still falls on your shoulders to try to discern what's right and what's, and what's correct. And at the end of the day, you are responsible for lining everything up with God's word. And we need to make sure that God's word is our authority for everything. No matter how great of a speaker you may be sitting in front of or hearing, no matter, no matter how, how pleased you are with, with things that someone might say, whether it's good or bad, wh whatever the case may be, you may run across someone that seems like a savant. They seem like they're super just brilliant and genius or they're really charismatic in the sense that you know, they could really hold your attention. They could tell stories really well. And, and they're just really awesome public speaker. But you have to not let yourself get too wrapped up into a person, into a man, because there are plenty of deceivers out there that are going to be out to destroy good doctrine and a good work. And I'll tell you what, this is a good church. There's good doctrine here. There's good believers here. People here believe right. We believe salvation right. We have a heart for other souls. We want to do a good work. And anytime there's a good work that's being done, those that oppose the gospel are going to try to destroy it. And we need to beware. We need to be a warning, especially with all, in light of everything that's been happening. Faithful Word Baptist Church is bearing the brunt of all the attacks. And the reason why is because Faithful Word Baptist Church is doing the most work for God Bar none. I haven't heard of anyone else doing as much as they are. And give credit where credit's due. They are. We're a very small church. Hey, we're serving the Lord the best that we can. But we're not getting the same results that they are down there. There's just more people. There's a lot more being done. It is what it is, right? The goal here is to grow and to gain more people. And, to, you know, we're doing, doing as much as we can do. Anyone, every individual can only do as much as you can do. But when there's a great work and many, many lives and many souls and many people being affected, the enemies of the gospel are going to hate that. And we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We know what they are. You know why we know what they are? Because God has blessed us and told us what they are. God has given us his word and his instructions, and he's given us plenty of warnings. He sent his apostles to give warnings and what I'm trying to do this morning is give you a warning and just be aware of this. 
It's important. We don't want to be shaken. In light of the, the things that have happened with Garrett Kirchway and Tyler Baker and all these guys that have been basically infiltrated Faithful Word Baptist Church and came out with these heresies and, and drawing people away, these be them that separate themselves. As I preached last week, they went out from us, but they were not of us. They come out finally just showing that they were never like us all along. And there are people that will gain your confidence. I mean, it happened to me. We had Garrett Kirchway preaching in this church. I considered him a friend. I thought he was on board. I thought everything was great with him. No problems. I trusted him. I mean, as much as I could trust anybody, I guess. Another lesson, though, is to be careful how much trust you put in any person. I mean, I trusted him, but I wouldn't leave him alone with my kids. I trust you guys, but I won't leave you alone with my kids either. Amen. Let God be true, but every man a liar. I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, we don't know. And, you know, that's just a little bit of advice. I mean, just, just take that for what it is. It's not meant to be offensive against any of you. I think you all know I feel comfortable with all of you and, and you know, uh, uh, feel like close friends. But at the end of the day, there's, there's certain things that are so valuable, like your children, that you just, you just don't know. And, I mean, you think about it. Think about the perverts out there that when it finally comes to light, when a predator is caught, no one knows. How often is it the close friend, the close family friend, or the uncle, or the relative, you know, someone who's just close, everybody loves this person. Oh, and that is the last person I would ever suspect. You hear it all the time. And it's easy when it doesn't happen to you to think, oh, they're just kind of dumb. They just overlooked some signs. They should have known better. No, these people, these wolves that are out to devour and destroy, they put on a really good show. And we are all susceptible to being deceived by people. But that's why we just have to just understand this is a possibility, not as a probability, it's actually a fact, it happens. It's not even just a possibility, it happens. And the Bible warns us that they will be around you. And the more work you're doing for God, you can expect more of that to happen. Because Satan wants to destroy the good work. So what we can do is be prepared by knowing this is the case. It doesn't mean that you go on a witch hunt trying to uncover everybody, you know, just everything about everybody just to see, I don't know, can I trust this person? Because you probably won't find it anyways. It's going to be fruitless. But what we do have is one thing that we know is true and is not a lie. We have God's word to rest on. At the end of the day, no matter if, if I were to fail you, if you were to somehow, if I were to just come out and just, just be so exposed as some heretic and I just change my belief and is into what, whatever, right? And just become exposed that, oh, Pastor Burson, man, he was there for all these years. I really looked up to him. I trusted him. Well, man, if, if he's a heretic, then forget all this. I'm done with this church stuff. See, that's what the devil wants to have happen. That's why he sends in the infiltrators. But you need to be strong enough in your faith that... You know, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. Don't let that shake your faith. Don't let that ruin your walk with God, your relationship with the Father. When other people fail God, other people that you might look up to, other people that you may trust, when they fall by the wayside, when they fail God, don't let that get you out of the game. Because it will happen. And that's why Satan does it, because he knows that it, it, it turns people off, it gets people's heart bitter towards God or bitter towards church, bitter towards serving him because they feel like they were let down. And, you know, maybe they weren't. But we need to be strong enough in our own faith. And the Bible warns us here, you're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, right? We're going to go back to Acts 20 in a minute. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember how long ago this was written. Okay, and we know that the Bible talks about when, the, as the Bible, the New Testament was being written some 2,000 years ago, 
They were already saying that they were in the last days. If they're in the last days then, how much more are we in the last days now that, that you know, this time has gone by? Verse number 1 of 2 Timothy 3 reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. It's dangerous. It's perilous. Now, we may not feel at danger right now. It doesn't feel very perilous, but it's coming. We are in the last days, and it's coming. There's a great tribulation that's coming that believers will experience and will go through. The hatred for Christ is going to grow so deep, and people are going to be so committed to just destroying believers in Jesus Christ that they are going to bring great tribulation such as was not seen since the beginning of the world, known nor shall be seen. It's, it's going to be un, unheard of, the amount of tribulation that's going to come. The last day is perilous time. And, and what form is this going to come in? The, the Bible continues here in 2 Timothy 3 to explain more about these last days and these perilous times. And as we read this, you'll see this is exactly where we're heading and to be prepared for what's to come. Look at verse number two. For, it means because, men shall be lovers of their own selves. I don't know if there's ever been a society that has been so proud and so conceited and so narcissistic as the United States of America has become and is headed. You look at the, the, all thanks to the technology of, you know, the media and the, and the you know, the, the propagating of the music and the, you know, and the control of the information and the brainwashing that's going on. And the, even the social media, people are all worried. Look at me. Look at what I had to eat today. Look at, look at what I'm doing. Look at me. How many likes can I get on this? And it's affecting the kids even more so than the adults. You know, it's bad enough when, when, the older generation is getting sucked into this stuff, but what, how much more is that doing to the kids? I'm 41 years old. People my age have a big problem getting on Facebook, but you know, but you know what? There's also a lot of people that are just kind of like, yeah, this is stupid. I don't want anything to do with it, but you know what the kids? They're on this stuff all the time, all day long, and it's really perverting their understanding of just social interaction with people. And, and creating this, this alternate reality of, of just being all about you or all about, you know, like just lifting yourself up and people say things they wouldn't normally say in person, online, you know, all, all of these different things. But you, it's not hard to see how men are becoming lovers of their own selves. And it's me, 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 me. That's the first thing it says. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Do we not live in a covetous world or society? Again, probably more so than ever in history. The, the, the cramming down your throat of wanting things and needing, oh, you have to have this and all the newest gadgets and all the newest technology and you have to have all this and people are just, I need that, I need that. How much debt is going on right now because people just want and want and want and want and want. I want to have that, I want to have it now. It's covetousness. And it's fed through usury in, in, this, in this, you know, debt that's bringing people into slavery. But I'm not going to go off into that. That's a whole other sermon on, on not getting into debt. But um, this is what's happening in the last days. And we're, let's keep reading here. Lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, right? They're braggarts, bragging about themselves and how good they are. I mean, good night. The, the, the man leading the country is one of the biggest braggarts to, to, to probably have ever walked, walked the earth. Always talk about how great he is. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. He's going to pay for that. I'm going to do this. You know, and just, just boasting of himself in every instance that he gets and how great he is. And it's not, it's not that he's just, he is a wicked man, but it's not just that he is, like, he didn't get into that office by accident. It's a reflection of what's going on in the heart of this country in general. 
People don't have a problem with it. Decades ago, there, there's no way a person like that would ever get elected publicly. There'd never be enough public support for a, for a braggart, covetous boaster like Donald Trump. No way. Yeah, I mean, every, everything. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not going to get off into the whole the politics thing. It doesn't matter, but, I mean, it does matter, but it's not, it's not what I'm preaching on this morning. But, but look at these attributes. Is this not where we're headed? Lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That's the sodomites. We see more and more of that today. It's not natural. Truce breakers, false accusers. They, they don't care about their word. They'll break promises. They'll, they'll falsely accuse people. Why? It doesn't matter. Their character, their integrity, they have no integrity. It doesn't matter to them. Look at all of these traits. Is this not where we're headed? And quickly. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Look at the backlash against anyone who wants to make any type of stand against wickedness these days. At all. And even the most perverted wickedness. Look at what happens to people who make a stand against sodomy. Publicly. They get trashed. They get their businesses destroyed. They get attacked vehemently, fiercely. It's the world that we live in. These are the last days. There are perilous times coming. We need to be aware of this. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. We ought to have nothing to do with these people. From such turn away, have nothing, have nothing to do with them on the TV, have nothing to do with them in your music, have nothing to do with them at all. You don't invite them into your house, digitally or physically. We have nothing to do with them. They're wicked. Verse number six, for of this sort, of what sort? Of all of the attributes we just saw. Of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now this is talking about what I'm really trying to warn you about this morning is the reprobate false prophet that's going to try to sneak in it's going to come in subtly. They're going to come in speaking all the right things. They're going to come in saying, oh, yeah, I've listened to Pastor Anderson. Oh, yeah, I've been listening for a long time. Oh, man, I love this stuff. Oh, let's go soul winning. Oh, let's, you know, they're going to come in. And, you're not, and, and you know what? I'm not saying you should be suspicious when someone comes in, they're excited about serving God, and, you know, and they say all these things. But I'm telling you, I'm warning you to be aware that this is how it's going to happen. That there's going to be people who possess all of these wicked attributes, but they're going to come in saying the right thing for a while. But eventually it will come out because there's a plan. There's a, there's a, there's a reason for it. It does come out. They're there to destroy. And just like Jannies and Jambres, it brings up this story from the Old Testament. They resisted Moses. Now, they didn't resist him right away. They were able to gather to get some type of a following and get people and sway people on their side first. They got people to like them. Maybe they were, maybe they were kind of dynamic. Maybe they had some good people skills or whatever to get people to kind of come on board with them. And they were, they were probably in line with Moses for a while until they realized they could do a whole bunch of damage because they had their own following and then they resisted them. Then they resisted. Then they, they wanted to, to basically bring everyone else into hell. And, you know, God had hell open up for them and swallowed them alive into hell. But they withstood Moses just as they withstood Moses. There's people 
that continue today to resist the truth. They have nothing to do with it. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Verse number nine, but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. He says, they're only going to get so far. They're going to proceed no further. Why? Because their foolishness, their folly shall be manifest unto all men. It'll be made known. It does come out in the end. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. These evil workers, these evil men, these people out there trying to destroy, they're going to get worse and worse and worse. He says, not only are they deceiving, but they're also being deceived. Why? Because their mind is darkened. They're reprobate concerning the faith. They cannot come to the knowledge of the truth. They're ever learning, but cannot come to the knowledge of the truth. They're going to be studying their Bibles. They're going to be people that, that, oh man, I read my Bible 20 times. But they don't understand it at all because their mind, their understanding is darkened because they're reprobate concerning the faith. They can never come to the understanding of the truth. But they'll be able to turn to a lot of different scriptures to try to prop up their deceits. Their false doctrine. Verse 14, but even though these people are out there, it says, but thou, continue thou. So this is for you. These people exist, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. He just got done explaining, hey, you know me. You know my manner of life. You know my work. You know my patience. You know what I've done. You know me. You know who you've learned this doctrine from. And hopefully I've, I've lived a good enough example here that you, I, I could say, you know me. You know what manner of man I've been. You know I've worked with my own hands. You know I wasn't chargeable on any of you. You know what I've done. Stay with the good doctrine. Don't let an evil man come in and seduce you. The reason why I brought up Faith Forward Baptist Church is because they're going to be running the church up here. And just as there has been wicked men that have crept in unawares, it may come here. Because this church is not nearly the same size and it's probably going to look easier to just destroy this and just, just get this gone. But you need to stay strong here. You love the people here. You love the community here. Stay strong. Stay with it. Stay with the good doctrine. And don't allow a wolf to creep in. And when they start showing their colors, you got to say something about it. Because they, what, what they do is they try to draw people after themselves. And what happens over and over and over and over and over again is because a good person naturally might want to overlook some things. They might want to just you know, show some grace, which we should be showing grace in many situations. But when someone comes to you and they start spreading, trying to, to convince you of heresy. And they're supposed to be a teacher. And, and you know, someone here that's, that's coming in to teach or to instruct, and they start bringing in some really rank heresy. You got to say something about that to the leadership, to other, other leadership within the church. And, and stop the, the poison from infecting anyone else. Bible says in verse 14, I'm going to reread that, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. We have scripture. 
and it's all given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. This gives us a truth. That's why I said at the end of the day, we need to go back to God's word and make sure we are we know God's word for ourselves. You need to be reading your Bible daily. You need to be in the word to be able to identify when someone comes up with just bad heresy and bad doctrine. So look back if you would to Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, we're going to start reading again in verse number 17. And what we see here is Paul is addressing the elders of the church in Ephesus. An elder is like the pastor. So he's talking to the people who are overseeing the church. But this wisdom, we just saw that the Bible, that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So just because he's addressing Elders or pastors doesn't mean we can't all learn from this and you can't still take application and be looking for yourself. He's giving them instruction to watch over the flock, to, to care for the flock. Let, let's reread some of this. We reread the whole chapter before we started. But this is, this is the mindset that I have. I share this mindset that Paul has. Now, I'm not speaking to a group of pastors, but the warning is the same. Verse number... 17. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Greeks and also to, or to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't this almost exactly what he was saying to Timothy? He said, hey, you, you know me. You know what manner of man I am. You know where this doctrine is coming from. But he's going to give the warning here that he's about to leave. You're saying just make sure you, you know this doctrine. You've already established it. You've got it settled in your heart. You understand it. This is good. This is why you're here. You're hearing good doctrine. Stay with this. Don't be swayed. Don't be moved. Don't get into these weird doctrines of devils. Stay with what you know is good. You've, you've proved this ministry. It's been proven. The work that's been done here. People have gone soul winning with me. I think everybody here, just about, has gone soul winning with me. You know this ministry. You know this work. Be careful about getting moved from people, especially you don't know. You may not know the work. Just be careful about that and be aware. The Bible says in verse 22, And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, my, my hands are free of blood. He said, a lot of you, you're not going to see my face anymore. But the time that I spent here, I preached all, all the counsel, the whole word. I didn't leave anything out. I didn't withhold teaching from God's word for any reason. He said, I gave you everything that I knew, I preached unto you. Verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock. Remember, he's talking to pastors here. He's saying, look, you need to take heed to yourself. I'm leaving and you probably won't see me again because 
He was teaching these pastors. He's the Apostle Paul. He was teaching them, helping them with the churches get started. He helped start the churches. He instructed, taught the elders, taught them good doctrine, taught them the Word of God. And now he's leaving saying, okay, I'm going. But you need to now take heed to yourself, first and foremost, just make sure you're covered. And then also... Um, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this. This wasn't maybe. This wasn't, well, this might have. He says, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise. He says there's going to be people that are going to come, the wolves are going to come in, that aren't there right now, but then he's saying, even just of your own selves, people from within shall men arise speaking perverse things, it's going to be perverted doctrine or perverted things, to draw away disciples after them. Sounds familiar. Oh, You should come to my church. This could be the best church in the whole world. Yeah, faithful word's great, but you should come to my, my church. It's going to be even better. And speaking perverted doctrines and trying to draw men after him to go somewhere else. Watch out for that attitude. Watch out for people like this. They may seem intelligent. They may seem like they know their Bible, but as soon as they start talking about things, you know, don't feel bad. And this is, this is where people can get in trouble sometimes. You may be sitting there going, well, I'm not a Bible scholar, you know. I, re yeah, I read my Bible. But this person obviously has just read the Bible way more than me, so they must just know more than I do. And then just listen to them, even though it might be contradictory to what you've already learned from the Scripture. Be careful for that. Now, obviously, we need to balance because maybe you have an incorrect doctrine on something, right? We all have to balance this. I may have an incorrect doctrine on something, too. But we really, that's why it's so important to weigh the doctrines against the Scripture and not just accept what anybody says to you as being true. Be diligent. Search these things out. That's why the, the, the Christians at Berea were, were um, commended because when Paul taught, the Apostle Paul was teaching good doctrine, but when the Apostle Paul was teaching them, they searched those things out diligently whether they were so. They, they, they checked it out for themselves. Now, it does require a little bit of work. It requires you to not just show up on Sunday morning, hear the pastor preach, and then just go home and leave your Bible closed and just either forget about the things that were said or just accept them as just being true and not check them out for yourself. It requires work, but it's your responsibility. And if you want to make sure you're not deceived, you must do that. Amen. Rightly divide the word of truth. And that's also why on our bulletins, I put sermon notes section on the back. I encourage you, whether you're at this church or any church, write down the passages. Read them in context later in the day or in the evening or the next day when, when what was taught is still fresh in your mind. Go through it for yourself. See, is that really what that's saying? Because whether it's maliciously intended or not, anybody can, can teach something that's incorrect. I, I am a good example of that. Before all of this stuff came out with the oneness doctrine and the modalism and all, that, all this other garbage that's been happening at Faithful Word, my understanding was a little bit off. 
I believed in the Trinity, but there was a few verses that kind of threw me off. And I hadn't fleshed it out completely for myself and just totally studied everything and, and, and focused on it to get a clear understanding of Scripture. After everything happened, it forced me to do that. And you notice if you go back in time, if you know the timeline of events, I didn't just preach a Trinity sermon right away. I searched out and, and understood and really nailed down exactly what I believe after hearing things that, that I'd never even been challenged on before that I didn't give enough consideration to. Now, I have taught some things that I don't believe right now. My understanding was off. And I'll admit that. You know why? Because I'm not perfect. But it's all the more reason that even though I wasn't intentionally trying to deceive or say something that was wrong, I was preaching the way that I understood it. I was still in error on what I was teaching. I wouldn't just call it rank heresy because it wasn't. It was, there's was a few verses and a few points that I, that I was, was incorrect about. But after studying the matter out for myself, I, I realized, oh yeah, I guess I didn't think this all the way through. I didn't, I didn't consider everything. And I made an adjustment. So that will probably happen again at some point in the future with me personally. That'll probably happen with any preacher or teacher that you listen to. So you need to be able to study for yourself. Study to show thyself approved unto God. You, you, this is what's behind me on the wall every day you come in here. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the text verse for this church. It's up to you to do the studying. I'm ashamed of what I've taught that's in error. I failed in that regard. Make sure that you're studying for yourself, though. And challenge. It's okay to, to, I mean, get things established of what you believe. It's okay to question what's being taught as long as your heart is right with the Scripture and God's Word and say, I just want to make sure everything is right with this book. And that you're putting God first, Jesus Christ as the head, And just make sure it lines up. Now, just because me or anybody may have been wrong in one area or in two areas or something like that, it doesn't mean you just throw everything away. Obviously, God has, has designed a structure of the local church, of a gathering together of believers, and he's ordained that there be teachers, pastors to watch over the flock. The Apostle Paul is instructing elders to watch over the flock, to teach, to have good doctrine, right? That's the job. The goal is to, is to help everyone be in unity and to teach and to teach things that others don't know. And that's why it's called an elder because spiritually you should be elder. You should have really been studying already and know your Bible in order to teach others also. There's a good place for it. That's why we come to, it's one of the reasons we come to church is to learn. So you don't just have to, th you know, you don't just, I'm not saying to throw anything away necessarily, but I'm, what I'm doing is trying to admonish you to know the word for yourself. Study. Study for yourself. That will help you to identify the wolves sooner. It'll help you not to get carried away, not to be deceived. And not to have as much damage caused by someone who's coming in to destroy and, I mean, when you know more, it's going to help out everyone else around you, too. I mean, the, the quicker you could spot someone that just starts spouting off heresy and get them out, 
the less people are going to be impacted, the less damage they're going to be able to cause. And the more people there are that know the Scripture will be able to help with that. It's not just for your own sake. It's for everybody's sake. Verse number 31, Therefore watch... Well, read verse number 30 again. And of also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Obviously, the Apostle Paul thought this was really, really important. He's stressing how much. He's like, I've, I've been warning you. I'm about to leave, and I've been warning you day and night for years. Watch out for these people. Don't let them come in and destroy your work. This is a real threat. Treat it as such. And my warning, what, what I'm trying to impart before I leave, I've done my best to try to watch over this flock. There have been people that have crept in already in the four and a half years this church has been here that have been wicked and they were unknown and people didn't know about it and I didn't know about it. And then when, there, when things did come to light, I was the, one of the last ones to learn about it. But it's going to happen. And now they're gone. Thank God. Now I'm hoping that this church can still grow and thrive and it can still continue to reach people. We've, I mean, we've been reaching people the whole time. We've been getting people saved, but there's been a cancer in this church that's gone now. But on the surface, you would never know. And you know what? It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Don't let that you know, I understand it may be sad, it's troubling, but don't let that get you out. Stay true to the Lord. There are deceivers. There are people who are going to come in and do this stuff. It's, it's important. There's a warning that needs to be heeded. We, could, we can see how the Apostle Paul is warning. Watch, remember, I warned I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Verse number 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified, which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. So after all these warnings and stuff, the thing that actually bothered them the most was just that they weren't going to see Paul because they loved him so much. They know, I mean, obviously they had already taken warning. He can't warn them enough. I can't warn you enough. There's, gonna, there's deceivers all over. That's why we have so many denominations. That's why there's Pentecostals. That's why there's Catholics. That's why there's all these different groups calling themselves Christian. Because there's deceivers. They're lying in wait to deceive. And there's people that come in and, and good churches get destroyed. And sometimes good churches get destroyed because people aren't watching. They get, they get too relaxed and comfortable. And you don't have someone watching out for the wolf. And when there's, when there's no shepherd, there's a smorgasbord for the wolves. When there's no one watching out. You may not be the pastor... But if you love the flock, you can still be on the lookout for the wolf. Amen. You could still be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed and, and you could you know, rightly divide the word of truth. And Hey, I mean, that, if nothing else, maybe you never spot a wolf, but you know for yourself what you believe. You know for yourself what good doctrine is.
I love you all. I've prayed for all of you here. I'm going to keep praying for you. Get in the Word. Make sure this is a regular habit for you to study the Bible. Keep coming to church, encouraging one another. And just, no matter, no matter who you hear from, no matter who's teaching, make sure it lines up with what you see in the Bible. Take notes, study them, and... and and make sure. And, and uh, you know, I commend you unto the Lord. God's good. God the Father is going to take care of you. And um, let's bow our eyes have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words, for your instruction, for the warnings that we received, dear Lord. We know that there's perilous times ahead of us. We know that there's a great tribulation that I believe is just around the corner and uh, is, all, is already about to begin. God, we ask for you to help us to stay grounded in the truth, grounded in your word, that we wouldn't let any um, false prophets or deceivers shake our faith, and that you would give us the wisdom that we need to keep going and, um, and understand your words and to be able to identify when, when someone's out there trying to deceive. Lord, give us uh, the very clear understanding of, of right and wrong. Give us that discernment, dear Lord, to be able to spot and identify God. And I pray that you would please help people to, to just question or bring up when they, when they see something that, that might not be right and, um, and not to just allow things to, to continue on if there's, if there's serious error, if there's someone spots someone who's a, who's a wolf, Lord. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really get into many other passages that you've given us warnings from Jude and 2 Peter 2 and, and so many other places in Scripture, dear Lord, where you've, you've warned us about people who, who will feast among us and that their eyes are, are full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin. These wicked people that just want to destroy. Lord, uh, we know that they're there. I pray that you please keep us safe from the evil and that you would lead and direct this church. God, build Word of Truth Baptist Church Help this church to just grow and thrive and that, and that you'd stir up the souls of believers in this area to want to serve you, to come here and to do a great work and, and join together with these great people that are already here, dear Lord, to just um, to do the work you have for them. I pray that you please just, just watch over and protect us all. In Jesus' name we pray.